In this video, we will learn to write the equation of a sine or cosine function given the amplitude and the period. Now, remember that if you have an equation in this form, y equals a sine bx, um, a is the amplitude, and um, the period is 2 pi over b. All right, really focus on this right here. You're gonna have to memorize this. All right, so this is gonna show up over and over and over again. So just get this in your head. The period is two pi over b. And same for cos. Okay, so if I want to write a sine equation with this amplitude and this period, um, off to the side, the first thing I need to do is figure out what that, what that b value is, all right, by using this little formula, period is two pi over b. So if uh, the period is two pi over b, all right, that means in this case, the period is two pi, well, hold on. Mm, they're giving us the period. I'm looking for the b, okay? Um, so that means pi over six, all right, is equal to two pi over b. All right, I, I put in pi over six where the period goes in this little formula. So I just need to solve this for b. Um, there are different ways to do it, but one way is to cross multiply. So if I do this diagonal, that's gonna be um, b pi. And if I do the other diagonal, that's gonna be 12 pi. Um, if I divide both sides by pi, you can probably see what's about to happen. Uh, the pi's cancel out. So that gives me that b is 12. Okay, once I have that b value, then I'm ready to write the equation. All right, so we're doing a sine function. So we would have y equals, um, so the amplitude is three. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a three in front. So three sine and now that comes the b value, so I'll say 12x or 12 theta. Okay, so there you go. All right, let's look at a few more examples. Look at number eight. As I accelerate, again, um, the period, and I'm just I'm going to start skipping this step. the The period is two pi over b. Okay, so I'm putting in the, so the period is three pi. So this becomes three pi is equal to two pi over b. All right, I'm just gonna start going straight to this. All right, for this, it would be convenient to use our little shortcut that we can take this denominator and reverse it with the three pi. So if I do that, I'm gonna immediately get that b is equal to two pi over three pi. And you can see these pi's are gonna cancel out, so that's gonna give me b is two thirds. All right, once I have that, I'm ready to write the equation. Um, so y is equal to six sine two thirds x, or two thirds theta. Easy peasy, right? Lemon squeezy. Um, so number nine, same thing. Okay, I know that the period is two pi over that b value. So that means 10 pi is equal to two pi over the b value. All right, reverse these, so that gives me the b value is two pi over 10 pi, um, so that's gonna eat the pi's cancel. Two over 10 is 1 fifth, so that's my b value. So now I can write the equation. So y equals two sine of 1 fifth x. All right, I could have said x over five if I wanted to, but I didn't want to, so deal with it. All right, number 10. Once again, number 10. 
um, I know that the period is 2 pi over the b value. What do you say the period is 7 pi? That means 7 pi is equal to 2 pi over the b value. Reverse, reverse. So the b value is going to equal 2 pi over 7 pi. The pi's cancel, so the b value is 2 sevenths. So now I can write the equation. So y is equal to 5 sine 2 sevenths x. OK. Um, looking at this next one, yeah, I'm, now it's really just the same thing over and over and over again. Um, so I know that the period is 2 pi over the b value. That means 8 pi is equal to 2 pi over the b value. Reverse these, I get b is equal to 2 pi over 8 pi. The pi's cancel, 2 eighths reduces down to 1 fourth. So that's why the equation is going to be y equals, there's my amplitude, 4 sine 1 fourth x. Okay, and then <clears throat> number 12. One more time. All right, I know that the period is 2 pi over the b value. That means pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over the b value. Um, when I have a fraction over here, for me it's easier to cross multiply. So this would be b pi or pi b is equal to 6 pi, right? Diagonal times diagonal. Um, if I divide both sides by pi, that's just going to give me b is equal to 6. So then, I can write the equation. So it's y equals amplitude, um, whoops, sine of 6x. All right. Um, and the only difference uh, with these problems, the next set, is that instead of um, sine, it's now cosine but it's really the same thing again. So I'm amazed if anyone is still watching this video because um, you know, I've done what, six problems all the same? And these are gonna be six more problems the same. So turn off the video and do the problems by yourself. So anyway, just in case if anybody's still watching, um, what was I saying? The period is equal to two pi over the b value. That means 2 pi is equal to 2 pi over the b value. If I do the little swibbity swap, I'm going to get the b value is 2 pi over 2 pi. Interesting. So in this case, the b value is 1. All right, now I feel like an idiot because, of course, um, the regular cosine function has a period of 2 pi. So we're just uh, verifying that it, it matches what our common sense tells us. So um, amplitude is 1 half cosine of x. So we don't need anything with it because cosine of x normally has a period of 2 pi. OK, so next time I see 2 pi, I'm, not, I'm just not going to modify it. Um, number 14. Well, we know that the period is 2 pi over the b value. So this means that 4 pi must equal 2 pi over the b value. Swap these, and I get the b value is 2 pi over 4 pi. The pi's cancel. b is equal to 1 half. So that's why the equation is going to be y equals um, amplitude cosine of one half x. All right, so there's 14. 
um, number 15. We know that the period is 2 pi over the b value. So this becomes 6 pi is equal to 2 pi over the b value. So if I swap these, I get that my b value is 2 pi over 6 pi. The pi's cancel. 2 6 is 1 third. Armed with my brand new b value, I can say y is equal to 2 thirds um, cosine of 1 third x, or I could have said x over 3. All right, number 16. We know that the period is 2 pi over b. So if the period is 8 pi over 3, then that means 8 pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over b. When I have a fraction, I like to think of it as cross multiplying. Um, so that's going to be um, 8 pi b is equal to 2 pi. Uh, no, is equal to 6 pi, sorry. All right, 8 pi b, 6 pi. So if I want to get the b, I'm going to divide both sides by 8 pi. Okay, the pi's are going to cancel out now. And that's going to leave me with b is equal to um, 3 fourths. Okay, so that's why my equation is going to be y equals 1 fourth times the cosine of 3 fourths x. All right, two more examples. We know that the period is 2 pi over the b value. That means pi over 4 is going to equal 2 pi over the b value. Cross multiplying gives me b pi is equal to um, 8 pi. All right, dividing both sides by pi is going to give me b equals 8. The pi's will cancel out. So that's why for an equation, I can write y equals 6 cosine of 8x. And finally, number 18. We know that the period is equal to 2 pi over the b value. Um, so if the period is pi over 2, this becomes pi over 2 is equal to 2 pi over the b value. Cross multiplying will give me b pi is equal to um, 4 pi. Dividing by pi on both sides, the pi's cancel out and I get b is equal to 4. So the equation becomes y equals whoops, forgot the amplitude, um, 11 cosine 4x. Here endeth the lesson.